Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 20 is where I want to turn our attention. And I'm reading from the New King James Version, and I hope that your hearts and your minds are ready um, in agreement. How many of y'all have arrived there yet? Amen. Y'all there. All right. Let's, let's, let's go. Before we read this powerful, poignant passage of Scripture, I want to ask you to join me in a word of prayer. God, even now, we thank and praise you for Jesus, we know, is the reason for the season. And we thank you that you've allowed us to be in this place and in this space at such a time as this. God, as we get ready to delve into your word and go deeper into the treasures and the mysteries of the gospel, God, I pray and ask that you would sanctify our hearts and our minds. Prepare us for what you have already prepared in private to be deposited in our hearts. God, take what you've already prepared in private and make it even more powerful as it's preached and proclaimed in public. We thank you for sending your son for our sins and for our salvation. And we celebrate you on today. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 2, and I want to look at verses 8 through 20. Here's what it says. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. Somebody say all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. The Bible says, I bring you good news and tidings of great joy for all people. Today I want to talk about joy to the world. Joy to the world. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but during the Christmas holiday season, I love all of the various Christmas songs that are celebrated and sung. In fact, around November, that's when I turn on XM to the Christmas station so that I can hear some of my favorite Christmas songs and get me in the Christmas mood. One of the songs I love the most is Joy to the World, The Lord is Come, Let Earth Receive Her King. I love that because that particular Christmas song tells the story of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I love it because in that song, as the verses and the lyrics are, are sang and celebrated, it gives people a chance to get the correct theology about who Jesus Christ is and what his birth and his life means for all of us. There are a number of songs that are sang during Christmas time, but not all of them celebrate Jesus Christ, but I love joy to the world because it's proper for us during Christmas to look back and reflect upon who Jesus really is. In fact, during the Jewish culture and time, what the people would do is that when someone had a son in particularly, the local musicians and singers would come around that house and they would celebrate and they would sing because that son had been born. 
but during the birth of Jesus Christ because the situation was a little bit different. And Jesus was outside and he was not in a house or in a place that was known to those who were familiar with his family. God intended for the angels to sing the song that men could not sing. And the text says that angels came during the time of Jesus Christ. There is a great angelic choir and chorus that sings joy to the world. The Lord is come. It's important for us to get this because as Christians, we must understand what Jesus' incarnation means for all of us. God became man and dwelt among us. He tabernacled among us, and when we couldn't reach up to God, God came down to where we were. I love this because as the angels begin to sing, they show up and speak to a group of individuals who are shepherding their flocks by night. When they come to these shepherds, they tell them, don't be afraid. We've got good news to bring great joy and tidings of joy for you to celebrate Jesus the Christ. I want you to retrace with me as we go back over this story and what happens when these angels and this angelic host and choir shows up to these shepherds because it's important for us to know we got a reason to rejoice during the Christmas holiday season. Point number one, notice that when the angels come to them, the first thing I want to lift up for you to see is the proclamation of his birth. Somebody say proclamation. When they come to them, watch what they say. They say that Jesus has come, get this, to bring salvation to all men. Somebody say all. That means all men who had been separated from God due to their sins. That when Adam fell in the garden, his sin nature and sin gene was passed down to every single human being. But because we couldn't reach up to God, God had to find a way to redeem and save mankind. So the message of Christmas is a message for salvation for all who would put their their faith and their trust in Jesus the Christ and the reason I said all because when God sends the angels to show up to the shepherds you have to understand that the shepherds were the lowest individuals on the social totem pole in fact shepherds because of their work and their trade they were not clean so they could not come to the temple and worship because of their working with sheep and working with flocks and working with herds. They didn't have an opportunity to do the ceremonial washings and cleanings. So this kept them separated from the temple of God and the people of God and a place of worship. So for you to be a shepherd, that meant that you were separated. You were alienated. You were outside of the house of God and the people of God and fellowship with God. So they couldn't celebrate the feast and they couldn't celebrate the festivals and they couldn't be there for the ceremonial washings so they were considered outcasts and outsiders but notice what God does he sends the message of his son to those who were outside those who were outcasts those who were separated from him and I love it because that's just how God works God is not just looking for those who are up and in but I thank God he looks for those who are down and out. I thank God that he shows up and gets outsiders. God looks for people who were separated from him. Now y'all can act like that if you want to but for some of us who are in here today we didn't get saved inside. We didn't get saved at the altar. We didn't get saved in YPWW class. We didn't get saved in Sunday school. We didn't get saved in a prayer meeting. We didn't get saved in BTU. Some of us he showed showed up outside of where we were. I want to know, are there any people up in here today who can thank God that when you couldn't reach up to him, he came and got you outside where you were. And the scripture says this in Ephesians, don't miss this. For those of us who are Gentiles, a Gentile is anyone who is not Jewish. So that means if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile. Watch this. There was in the temple, the holy place, 
the most holy place, the holy place, the inner court, then the outer court. Now, the Gentiles couldn't come in the temple to worship Yahweh. They had to stay outside on the outskirts. But Ephesians says when Jesus came and died on the cross, those of us who were alienated and separated from the things of God have been brought near by his Christ. That means when we were outside of the covenant and promises of God, he sent his son to get us and bring us in. So the reason we celebrate Jesus on today, because it's good news that all of us who were separated from him have been brought near by his cross. Nisia the other day, Nisia serves here in the ministry and in the church, and the other day I just so happened to see she was outside in the cold, knocking on the door, ringing the doorbell, trying to get in. I just so happened to see it from where I was. So I rushed from my office upstairs, came down the hallway and saw her outside in the cold opened up the door and let her in. It wasn't like she wasn't trying to get in. She couldn't. But I recognized in order for her to get in, I had to leave from where I was, walk down to where she was, open up the door and let her in. That's what Jesus did 2,000 years ago. He left the holy halls of heaven, came down to earth where we were, let us in. Now, I wish I had some folk that would celebrate Christmas with me. If you can't praise any other day, you ought to praise on Easter and you ought to praise on Christmas because joy to the world, the Lord has come. <laughs> Dougie, I want you to get this. Watch this. Here it is. It is a proclamation, walk with me, of salvation, but then it's a proclamation of inclusion. Okay? God wanted us to know He's a God of inclusion. That those who are outside, he still considers them, loves them, wants them, desires them. So he comes to the shepherds. Jesus could have been born in a palatial palace. He could have been born in the temple. But if he was born in a palace and a temple, those who are outside wouldn't have had access to him. So he wanted to make sure that the message goes to those who seem to be undesirable. He shows up and speaks to these shepherds, tells them that the son of God is lying in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and the fact that he speaks to the shepherds first shows us that Jesus is for everybody. Yes, he's for the up and in. He is for those who have means, but he's also for the down and out. He's for those who have a GED, but he's also for those who have a PhD. Jesus is for everybody, and every single soul matters to him. And rather than announcing the good news to the priests at the temple, rather than announcing Jesus' birth to the kings, rather than announcing his birth to high officials and princes, the good news came to shepherds who were outcasts of society, and this is important for us to note because Jesus desires that everybody who's outside be brought in. He is a God of inclusivity. He's not a God who's just for Republicans and right-wing people. He's not a God who's just for Democrats. He's not a God who's just for libertarians. Jesus is for everybody. And the reason we need to recognize this, because if we're not careful, we'll try to put God in a box and say, if you don't look like me, vote like me, talk like me, think like me, Jesus is not for you. But I want to clear the air on today. Jesus is for everybody, everywhere. He's a savior from the uttermost to the guttermost. I don't care what your back background is, your past is, your pigmentation is, touch a neighbor up in here and tell them Jesus is for everybody. I serve on the board of an organization and last summer they said, Pastor, we're putting on a luncheon and a workshop of inclusivity and diversity. We want our organization to understand that we're welcoming and open for people and we don't have any pro we don't have any prejudice we don't have any bias so we want our staff 
to be trained and we want it in the DNA and the culture of our organization. They said, we want to use the banquet hall. Since you're a board member, would you allow? I said, absolutely. So we hosted a luncheon there and the whole day what they were doing was teaching the people how to let down the wall of their biases and their prejudice and understand that the organization and the message that they bring is for every single person and they don't want to turn anybody away. That's just not a message for corporations and organizations. That ought to be the message of the church that when people come into this place, if they can't find hope anywhere, they ought to find it in here. If they can't find help anywhere, they ought to find it in here. If they can't find acceptance anywhere, they ought to find it in here. If they can't find love anywhere, they ought to find it in here. And we got to get out of ourselves and recognize that the message of Jesus Christ is bigger than our silos, bigger than our small circle, bigger than our background. Jesus is forever. Everybody. And I want you to know this. Jesus is for the single parent mother struggling to feed and raise her children by herself. He's for the young adult working to manage life's pressures. He's for the NBA all-star who's struggling with the pressure to perform. He's for the corporate executive who's dependent upon making big decisions. He's for the celebrity who seems to be alone once they exit the stage. He's for the business professional who's constantly crunching numbers. He's for the social elite as well as the social outcast. He's for the person surviving the Midwest winter in a homeless shelter. He's for the prisoner who's received an unfair sentence for a non-violent offense he's for the migrant child who's been warehoused like an animal in a detention center scared and frightened at risk of disease and sickness Jesus is for everybody in fact Jesus identifies most with those who are outside think about the providence of God that he made sure there was no room for him at the end so that Jesus would be outside. In this text, he's outdoors. In a few more chapters, you'll see in the book of Matthew that Jesus and his family were asylum seekers who fled Israel for Egypt because it was too dangerous. Thank God they didn't have governmental policies in Egypt that separated children from their families because Jesus' story would be a whole lot different and if you want to know what love looks like compassion looks like just human decency looks like care and concern for other people look like look at the story of Jesus because God designed for him to be outside so that everybody had access to him so that nobody would be turned away y'all gotta excuse me I'm celebrating on today because joy to the world the Lord has come let earth receive her king we not only see the proclamation point number two notice the place because the text says that where Jesus was born two points under that it was a modest place and it was a meeting place it was modest I know we love to romanticize just how cushy and comfortable and cozy was the place Jesus was born. No, no, Jesus was born in historians say a stable. But not only a stable, many historians say it wasn't even a stable, it was a cave that was carved out usually at the side of a house so that the person who owned the farm animals could hear any sign of thieves or robbers. So they kept the cave or the stable close so that they could see and hear what was happening with their animals. Now the stable was an unclean place, an unsanitary place. Jesus is born in a filthy and dirty animal stable with no epidural shot for Mary, no doctors to tend to her needs, no nurses making sure that the birthing process was done right. She was born, she gives birth to her son in a stable and he's placed in a manger a manger is a feeding trough that's where the animals would come and eat their food so they had to clean out of clean a feeding trough in the middle of a stable wrap jesus up in swaddling clothes so that people
people who are outside could come in. Pastor, why are you saying that? Because during Jesus' birth, there was no chestnuts roasting over open fires. There was no lights that surrounded the entire house. There was no blow up uh, snowmen or Santa Claus in the lawn. Uh, there were no gift wraps, gifts underneath the tree. There were no stockings that were hanging over the fireplace. There was no warm uh, hot chocolate and cocoa for them to sit back and sip and celebrate. No, Jesus was born in a modest place and the reason this is important for us to look at because Christmas has been so commercialized that people have forgotten all about Christ. It ain't about the gifts. It ain't about the stocking stuffers. It ain't about pleasing people. It ain't about me trying to help you understand I love you because the people who know I love them know I love them 365 days out the year. I'm not going to go into debt going into a new year just to try to, oh y'all ain't going to help pastor on today. Touch somebody and tell them remember what Christmas is all about. Christmas people are burnt out, worn out, stressed out, and Jesus is left out. Preach, boy. We must remember that Christmas is all about Christ. In fact, notice what the angels say. They say, go down to Bethlehem. Go back to where he is, the nativity. You'll find him in Bethlehem. They didn't tell them to go online and order up a whole bunch of door gifts to be dropped off at the house. They didn't tell them to get distracted and stop by the mall and spend a few hours there. They said, go down to Bethlehem because at Bethlehem is where you'll find him. I'm so glad they didn't take a detour. I'm so glad they didn't get sidetracked. I'm so glad they didn't get distracted they went down to the house where Jesus was worshipped and celebrated and the reason we got to worship on the day is because if you got the message from the angels you recognize that you're not supposed to spend all your money at Amazon you're not supposed to spend all your money at Kohl's, Walmart is not supposed to get all your money, matter of fact come to the house where Jesus is and if you're a wise man you'll bow down and offer him a gift, y'all ain't helping me at 830, make some noise up in this place if you know Jesus is still the reason for this season a mother was out shopping with her family and uh, got separated from her son and her son was somewhere off away from the mother the mother's so engaged and engrossed and in shopping she lost her son looked for him high and low found him standing in front of a nativity and his mother came and got him said boy I've been looking for you everywhere where you been at? What are you doing? He's so engrossed and engaged in this nativity. He said, look, mama, it's Jesus. She said, boy, I don't have time for that. Don't you know we got shopping to do? She forgot what it was all about. We need to go back this Christmas. Look at the story again and say, look, it's Jesus. Oh, God, I feel a preach coming on right there. I dare you to look back over this year after all your highs and lows and say the only reason I made it, look, is Jesus. I dare you to look back over your week when you could have been let go from your job out in the cold, one of the people in a homeless shelter, somebody up in here say, look, is G. Oh, God, the reason I got health, the reason I got strength, the reason I can stand up here today and lift up my hands. Look, is Jesus. Open up your mouth and give him glory. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. But wait a minute. Because I love this. It wasn't just a modest place. It was a meeting place. Because when they show up, to the place where Jesus is to worship him. All walks of life are in that place. The shepherds run from outside, come to Bethlehem where Christ has been born. And God transformed a stable into a sanctuary. God transformed that situation so that the shepherds who were known to be unclean didn't have to worry about shaving, washing, or bathing 
they could just show up to the meeting place. Isn't that just like God? To make sure there's common ground for everybody in the house where Jesus is. There weren't just shepherds who were there. These are poor individuals who are at the lowest of the totem pole. There's also wise men who are here. Wise men were scientists and astrologers. Wise men were individuals who represented upper echelon of society. So all in the same house you had people of all walks of life who were on common ground focusing on Jesus I say that because it's important when we come to the house of God that we lay aside our titles lay aside our degrees lay aside our income lay aside our education lay aside what we do for a living all of us got in common that we need to get in front of Jesus in front of him worshiping him and humbling ourselves get out of the way so somebody else can see Jesus. I wish I had a witness up in this place who knows when you come into the house of the Lord. I don't care what your title is. I don't care how much money you make. I don't care who you are in corporate America. Thank God for what we do. I don't care what you do as a business person. I don't care what you do as a PhD. All of us are on common ground when we come up in this place. And if you recognize that, give God some glory right where you are those of us who are keepers of the end must recognize it's not about us people trying to see Jesus okay y'all ain't walking with me here it is they didn't come to see Mary they didn't come to see Joseph they didn't come to see the innkeeper they didn't come to see nobody but Jesus those of us who are in ministry, those of us who serve, those of us who sing, those of us who operate the inn, the innkeepers must recognize it's not about us, it's about Jesus. Get out of my way, I'm trying to see Jesus. I can't see him with you talking to me during the sermon. I can't see him with you shashaying around here trying to be recognized. I can't see him with you trying to walk in and make your grand interest. Y'all ain't going to help me preach, I'm going to preach anyhow. I can't can't see him with you all up in the way. I need you to scoot over some. Let me see Jesus because the stuff I'm dealing with is too serious. The needs I have are too important. I need to see his glory. Get out of the way and let me see Jesus. But hold on because I want you to understand this. We got folks streaming and in house. When you show up in the end and you show up in a place where Jesus is, recognize there's going to be some smells in there. Okay. There's going to be some sights, some sounds, and some smells. Okay. They're in the place where Jesus is. There's grunting from the bulls. There's nah from the sheep. There's noise from other people. There's smell from their mess. But those who are in the house where Jesus is have to recognize that I have to block out the smells, the other sights and the sounds. And I got to focus on Jesus. I can't promise you that when you come on Sunday morning, you might not smell some reefer. I can't promise you when you come up in here on Sunday morning, you might not see somebody out of water. I can't promise you when you come in here that the usher's going to be nice every time you meet them. I can't promise you that the person you're sitting next two can greet you but you got to get to the point where you say I can overlook the sights and the smells and the sounds and concentrate oh y'all want to have no church with me I wish I had some folk up in here who could say I can deal with being offended at church because I deal with being offended on my job I deal with being offended at the club I deal with being offended at the mall so I ain't gonna quit my church leave my pastor because somebody said something or I smelled something do I have a witness up in this place to Touch somebody and tell them, look for Jesus. I love it because we see the proclamation. But then we see the place. But then we see the praise. Because the text says when the shepherds got there, oh God. The shepherds came in immediately. 
They didn't have gifts like the wise men. They didn't have fine clothes like some of the other people. They've been dealing with smelling and stinking sheep. But they came just as they were. I feel like I could land the plane right there. Because there's somebody in here who can say I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, worn, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. So the reason I praise and the reason I wave my hands is because when I was down and out, he led me in. Is that your testimony? I got two more services to go but can we just stop for a moment and give God some glory and give God some praise if you got joy and you got Jesus you ought not to have a problem opening up your mouth and giving God some glory and giving God some praise and the Bible says when they showed up in that place they opened up their mouths and they begin to praise God because joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Pastor, why are they praising? Why do they have joy? Not because they have a new iWatch. Not because they have a new iPhone. Not because they got expensive gift cards. Not because they got new clothes. They've got joy because they got Jesus and when you got Jesus he'll make you run when nobody's chasing you he'll make you cry when nothing's wrong is there anybody here who don't mind getting out of your seat and giving God the best praise you got if your neighbor won't praise him if your neighbor remains sitting down I dare you to stand on your feet open up your mouth and say I still got joy because I got Jesus you can have my car you can have my house you can have my job but you ain't gonna have my joy this joy that I have the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away have I got a witness open up your mouth and give God some glory and give God some praise shout glory shout glory 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 oh I thought I had some worshipers up in this house open up your mouth and let the world know you got joy unspeakable and full of glory I love it because when they came to that place, it didn't stay with them in that place. God spoke to the shepherds because the shepherds came across multiple caravans. God is so strategic. He said, it's going to be the shepherds who hear the message first. Because when they leave, the text says, verse 20, they left praising, glorifying, giving God glory, because what they've seen and what they've heard, if you heard something, if you've seen something, if you felt something, you don't have a problem giving God glory. Now this is where the people who ain't seen nothing won't praise. But anybody in here seen God perform miracles? Anybody in here felt his presence? Anybody ever heard him whisper to you, everything is going to be alright. Open up your mouth in this place. I want you to know this, and I'm going I'm, I'm to go. This is my closing statement. I want you to get this. Um, the Bible says that they left witnessing and sharing the gospel. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the best time of the year for you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ and to do it gently and to do it sincerely with your neighbors, with your co-workers, with the people you come across in shopping. 
people's hearts are more open and receptive. It's something supernatural that happens at Christmas. Christmas softens up the hearts of mean people. Are y'all hearing me? I went out yesterday and everybody was so nice. Come on, have y'all experienced that? Come on, come on. Be be because for a moment we have a chance to stop and to pause and concentrate on him. And I want you to do this as you leave to do just what these wise men did. The Bible says they shared and witnessed about what they had been told, what they heard, and what they saw. I want you to gently, if you do buy gifts for people, let there be a message with the gift. If you don't have anything to buy for them, pray for them, touch and agree with them. Be kind to them. Be compassionate to them. Show them that you have joy. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. After the sweaters wear out and the gas cards have been used and the gift cards have already been spent, you need to have the gift and give the gift that keeps on giving. Do me a favor, if you don't mind, stand on your feet really quickly. This is a chance I love because anytime we get to preach the pure, unadulterated word of God and the gospel, you know, there's so many different kinds of teaching and preaching today. People talk about all kinds of stuff, and it seems as though they leave Jesus out. But this is a time we want to bring it all the way back to the center. He's the centerpiece. Yes. And to know him is to know peace. Yes. If you know Jesus, you'll have peace. If you don't know Jesus, you'll fall into pieces. If you're here today, yes. Yes. heads are bowed, eyes are closed.